Welcome back to Finnegan's Garage. Thank you for hanging out, especially those of you that went to fsmgarage.com and bought the merch, because as always, your poor financial decisions involving your clothing allow me to make even worse decisions involving my vehicles. Like the OG, this is the Roadkill Ramp Truck, is a 1973 Chevrolet C30 Crew Cab, and it has always been a car hauler. It used to be powered by a 454 and a Turbo 400, but these dudes came into my garage three years ago? It's been a while now. Yeah, three years I ago. I remember I called it a big block delete back then and everybody's just like, the haters were like, you can't delete a big block. Oh, yes, you can. Because <laughs> better. Oh, dude, dude. So three years ago, Will and Todd came into the garage and we took out the 454 and Turbo 400 and in its place, we installed a Cummins 12 valve diesel and a 47 RH transmission out of a airport tug. Let's be real. It was about this long. It had 750 gears, and you could bounce the wheels off the ground. Not only did we come and swap this truck, but these guys put compound turbos on it, and it is the best tow rig I have. It will destroy tires. It will do a 16 second quarter mile pass with a gremlin on the back, allegedly. <laughs> if you watch Roadkill, you've seen it. And today they're back because they have a new ported head. They have new injectors. Are they? Yep. Call them a power jet injector. Yeah. Okay. Basic technology. I mean, it'll, it'll clean we're getting rid smoke. of the smoke. We're gonna clean it up and probably add some power over at it. Yeah, it's so gonna be really, really fun. I love everything about this truck except the smoke. That's not who I am. I don't smoke at all, and uh, it would be great if the truck did because my wife would actually ride it if I get rid of the smoke. I'm not saying we're gonna clean up 100, percent but a lot, a lot. She wears sunglasses. Get it close. Get it 90, and, <laughs> and then we'll be good. The tinted glasses. She won't even notice it. No, we'll, we'll clean up a lot. It's gonna be great. Okay, sweet. So we're gonna rip the hood off this thing. And then the cylinder head is coming off because they also have a ported head. I don't know if I mentioned that, might have. But uh, we're gonna rip it apart. Hopefully not disturb the new vintage air kit that literally got installed yesterday and is yeah. fully charged. Yeah. And then uh, we'll go drive it around and see, did we reduce the smoke and does it feel faster? That's all that really matters right there. <laughs> oh, David Candy. What's, what's, what's so tell Amy. Amy, love you, thank you. <laughs> That's all I cared about. I didn't care there's a cylinder head in there. Oh, there's Give me a lollipop. Oh, there's three. <laughs> three. I'm going ham. There we go. There we go. All the good companies. Like Motion Raceworks, they give you fruit snacks. Sometimes they give you dum dums. These are, uh, yeah. This one's a little. That's how you get me back as a customer. Okay. I have been told by the folks from Powerman Driven Diesel that uh, a mixture of ATF and acetone is better than any other commercially available penetrant. We're going to try this. I don't know what the mixture ratio should be. Uh, we're gonna give it a shot. So this is acetone. This is ATF. Everything's pink. Everything. Is that enough? It's supposed to be a 50-50. Oh, give it some more. That's, that's info. That was better before I started. This this is called cooking with Mike. <laughs> <laughs> that's 50-50. Hey, uh, Food Network's reaching out. They, they want to see Mike's concoction. We want to try this. I've never. I tried need some it. sort of catchphrase though. <laughs> Fix it with acetone. <laughs> Fix it with the tone. Tone up your rusty bolts. Right. Okay. I thought Let's you were going to I thought you can pour yeah, both in the bowl work. and like stir it. <laughs> I was until I realized this is just fine the way it is. We're gonna find out. I've never done it. We're going to find out. I've always wanted to try. Mm -hmm. It's definitely going to make a mess. Oh, yes. Go on the back side of these bolts too. Oh yeah. Ones we have access to. Oh god, this is gonna make a mess. <laughs> it's okay though, it's cleaning as it's making a mess because there's tall salt. Todd, you wanna get the uh, the other one? Yeah. <laughs> Some guy on the internet's just laughing right laughing now. Laughing right now. Like, you I put, idiots. I put this graphic out and people believe it. <laughs> <laughs> My meme made them make a video. <laughs> I will say, look at that bolt already, though. It's been dried off. And the acetone is um, good stuff. Doing it's, it's thin that uh, ETF down. Like Why is it so dark in the bottom? Is there like it did it not mix well? See how halfway down how dark it is? Yeah. You gotta mix it up, you idiots. Probably made a bomb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Boom. 
but it only explodes if like like a little dandruff hits it or something. Something <laughs> weird, you know. <laughs> like it doesn't blow up on everyone, but if you have dandruff, don't do this. A single Irish arm hair yeah, oh. sets off a chain reaction. We are in luck today. <laughs> Called the butterfly there. <laughs> well, if you put right. that much PB Blaster on it, yeah. probably would have been too. <laughs> yeah, now that I've ruined my blasted. acetone. <laughs> I bet it's not good to weld with that anymore. It's probably uh, not a good so weld prep. My snap on Pierce guy said he wishes that they would make a premium icon like this because he can't do, he calls this a poverty wrench, but he said they work really good. Uh, all the but he rubber, said icon. <laughs> all the rubber handled ratchets that you get at Arbor Freight were great. What? It actually <laughs> worked pretty good. It wasn't <laughs> the big fight. Okay, wait, did we not cover one up in that stuff? Like, can we compare, you know? Or All the bottom ones, one right below it. Oh yeah, so go, yeah, go, go downstairs and let's see. I just want to see if the threads are wet in the middle there. I mean, I don't know, it looks kind of dry. Try, try the bottom one, see if it's any harder. If it were really cool, we would have put half a PB kind of torque wrench out and then measured the difference in force. Oh, oh We're yeah. so stupid. Well, we can't give them all the science all at once. Yeah, that's true. We're just going to give them the solution. Yeah. Okay, I'm on the bottom one. Okay, tell me if this feels harder or softer. Wait, way harder. <clears throat> it mm. wasn't that stuck, but I would say by like, my calibrated hand, the top one took 25 foot pounds to break loose, and this one took about 40. Mm. So we could PB blast the one underneath this guy. Yeah, and this yeah. is fighting me the whole way. Look, it's, it's tight right now. We got it's fighting you the whole way? Okay, yeah. Look, All right, P blaster, bottom row. Torque wrench. And a torque wrench. I got a torque wrench. I got a PB blaster. Go mm. We go right here. Okay. This here is a snap-on tech angle torque wrench, which is digital and nice, and also the head flexes. And this thing will be accurate whether you put the head there or it's perfectly straight or anywhere in between. And uh, science. Todd, you wanna do some science? How many torques does it take to break loose? <laughs> it's uh, that, that's not a snap-on socket. <laughs> 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 I got snap-on toolboxes in here that are really sweet, but they're not full of snap-on tools. I got very few. Still, uh, still working on that part. Mm. Oh yeah, that's just gonna keep happening. <laughs> set, it to like, set it to like 30 and you'll just see what it... Actually, so the cool thing about this is it's going to light up as you get close, and then it's going to beep and vibrate. Should we go like more than that? Because we're going to go higher. Well, if you higher. go over it, it's, yeah, it doesn't matter. So put it at 25, and if it goes over, it'll record the max value. Let's Have go 30. Let's see if 30. Let's see if 30 releases. Okay, so this is covered in our new ATF mixture. ATF and acetone. ATF and acetone. Okay. All right. So we'll come to this side. The... All right, here we go. Okay, let me zoom in. 27. It's not moved yet. 35, 36, that's what I can recall. The highest I saw was 39. 39? Okay, so now let's go down to the bottom row. Straight below it. Is the bottom row dry or pee blast? PB. Okay, so PB the bottom row. Come on, let's just stay with this. Extension. Yeah, we need an extension. I just think there could be arguments well with the extension. It's going to affect the torque, bro. Yeah. People are, people people are going to say it. It's like, that's the best we can do. I'm sorry. It's the best we can do. You know, it's good enough for who it's for. Yeah, the lab of Finnegan's Garage, this is what we can do. It's yeah. a, it's Look a, at that ceiling, bro, all right? Like, <laughs> but let's just, there's extension cords on extension cords. This is not it's a, a lab. It's this a snap-on extension, so it doesn't affect the torque. Uh, I don't, do I really have snap-on extensions? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Somebody must have left that here. I, I haven't, I haven't invested in all the snap-on tools yet. I have the boxes though. Okay. In the room here, we can. Oh, 40, 42. Not, yeah, 42, so close. Yeah. That was not, like, I wouldn't say. So we need a sample size of more than one to be legit, though. Yeah, Can yeah, you hit do. another one yeah. on the bottom? You yeah. don't take that out, just go to the next one. Or Maybe I'll do an extension, okay? 
Does extension reach anywhere? So. Extension mm. doesn't change you, it. You could do no extension and do the top row, and we'll just keep seeing if our, okay. our first number, what was it? 39 was the high for acetone and uh, ATF. ATF. Let's just go across the whole row, and then we'll have a, a better sample size. The old man. There we go. Oh. Okay. You watching? Yep. Ooh, that one hide in it. Yeah. That one went. I saw forty six. Woo. Okay. That's a that's that's an L there. Yeah. <laughs> Where to go, farm boy? Okay, so this mixture was found on a meme on the internet. <laughs> oh, Another 46. Okay, go number six. I wonder why number one was so easy. Try six. Can you reach that one? On the top? Yeah. Can Will the tool nobody? allow without falling out? It's a real question. Only somebody had longer arms that could just reach back there. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing all of this, and I'm sure that the distribution of fuel throughout this manifold was exactly the same cylinder cylinder, and every bolt saw exactly the same amount of heat, and you know. Except that for the fact that number one and six always rattle loose and fall out. That's why I think one was so loose on me. So loose. Uh, I don't want you guys to think my arm calibration was that far off because it it's not. It was. <laughs> it definitely was like in the twenties on the break free torque. Your guns are fine calibrated. Your German torque. Okay, here we go. Nope, I lied. We're not there. Okay. Oh, oh, I saw that 50. one is that one is stuck. <laughs> 70. Oh, God, this one's breaking, isn't it? Do we need heat? We'll stop right there. <laughs> okay. All right. So, uh, so I'm going to say the data is inconclusive <laughs> and I may have just wasted a perfectly good bottle of acetone. I'll go clean it now and we'll keep moving on with actual speeds parts. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> All right, we're making progress. Top of the motor is coming apart. Getting ready to pull the head off. We are having a few snags with our ARP head studs. Uh, some of them are just kind of welded into the block. So I'm double nutting this one after already breaking my five millimeter sockets while trying to use the Allen portion of uh, the stud. But I believe the old double nut trick is going to do the job. If we can find both nuts. One job to fight. You had one job. You had one job. Now I got this wrench really wedged in there. The fun part will be when we have to lift the cast iron head up at the same time as lifting the push rod. That won't come out because the firewall's in the way. Because I don't know if I'm willing to drill the factory hole in the yeah. firewall like a Dodge truck. Yeah, the Dodge is plan for it. We kind of forgot that step three years ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I want to put a hole in the cow just to put a push rod in. Yeah, let's see if we can get it out without drill holes. That'd be rad. Let's see if I can get this wrench unstuck now. It won't reverse. It was reversing before. Oh, you're using the, uh, oh, you crazy. <laughs> oh, you used the gear wrench. <laughs> well, I couldn't uh, it's, uh, spin the wrench. Isn't it switchable? Now. It was working before, now the switch won't work. Did you get it blues? I don't think so. Um, pair of pliers to pull the switch over and get it done. Just really didn't want to break here. Oh, there it goes. There we go. <sighs> Crisis avoided. Just enough there. I, if we had a six-sided nut so I could get both threads good, but we need to go buy a nut. Basically, we don't have any in beautiful boltsandnuts.com. They don't keep <gasps> ARP fine thread metric She's in stock. She's unkind word about bolts and nuts. We need some M14 by... That's going to be our M12 by uh, one 
0.25. That's going to be hard to come by. <laughs> what if we stick a washer between both nuts? Does, just, does that do anything for Just us? go the normal way. The problem is you got to leave a, this sandwich down there, but if you're willing to risk it... Well, don't use that wrench. Use a non-ratcheting one. But you can't screw it down because it hits the oh, bell train as we go down. Dun, dun, dun. I uh, hear I'm getting fancy Another now. internet method is some valve lapping compounds. Supposedly will really make this bite in there. <laughs> I've heard that, but the last internet myth didn't work so, out so well. Is that the right one? Right? I'm timid. Is it working? Sure doesn't look like the right one. It says a five. Okay. Sloppy, but okay. Leverage. Yeah, <laughs> no. <laughs> that thing is in there. That's a little heat. How about some heat? Hang it down low. You got to clear down the blow. Your threads are far away. I guess just the, the stud itself. Can I don't know if I'd put heat into a stud yeah. like that. It's kind of yeah. scares you. I mean, they could do engine heat, but. Walk's still warm. Hmm. Are these other ones same deal? That one's stuck um, too? I haven't tried them hard enough to like round off the, the nut in them, but. I like to ignore the, the ones that aren't working and just move on to things that do work. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just you know, that way you're in a better mood when it goes sideways later. The push rod? The push rod works. It's still back there right where it needs to be. <laughs> <laughs> so I just discovered this beautiful sticker. Never have the lifting arm extended with the legs folded up, but this is okay. Yeah, yeah, that would be bad. So that, pictures are universal, both Chinese and English. We understand that. Common sense is common sense, right? Yeah. All right. So In any language. So this Pit Pal product, sponsored by Pit Pal Pro. <laughs> Definitely not sponsored. <laughs> <laughs> but they were cool. I, I messaged them once. I'm like, hey, after 20 years, it's getting frayed. Uh, can I send it back instead of buying a new one? And they were like, yeah, we'll, we can sew another one on. So you guys at home, if yours is fraying after 20 years. And if your name's Mike Finnegan, they'll do it for free. <laughs> I don't think they care who you are. Okay, so not all the head studs came out. Yeah, so, so we're gonna, gonna be lift, fun. We're gonna lift the head off, but you can see these are to the point where we're about to round off our uh, M5 beautiful Gems. socket. And so we're gonna try to lift the head up enough that uh, Good round. We clear. It's gonna work. And that push rod over there, that that's gonna be fine. It's gonna be interesting. It's gonna come with it's gonna come with the cylinder head. Mike, you said that this engine fit better in a square body Chevy than a Dodge. And I'm upset that the square body Chevy did not come with cow holes already from the factory <laughs> for the push rod. What's wrong? What, what I, were they thinking, Chevy? In seventy three I can't believe they didn't anticipate the swap happening forty years later. It's weird. Yeah. I mean, this engine was a, was basically invented and put in production, I think, in 85 or 86. But Chevy should have known in 73. Mm-hmm. I agree. Let's lift it and find out. Okay. Yeah. You got to come forward. You're going to rip it straight back. Yeah, that's, that's better. Look, grade five hardware on the lifting that's, points. Nice. I'm kind of scared to... Uh, let the power lift it. Is it okay? Or should I do it by hand? Just, the just lifting the whole truck. Oh, well, there we go. There we go. Can you lift it down a little bit? I think it rocked to one Let side. Down a little bit. Yeah, the other side has not come out. It's a little down. Yeah, yeah it, it's here. stuck on the yeah. studs, so it just lifted that side. I could maybe put a pry bar between the manifold and the turbo because that's what you want to do and lift this manifold, side up. You, turbo you don't want to get lifted? Just, just, uh, I mean, go up far. You'll see it. The manifold and the turbo are still bolted together. Oh, are they? With okay. a really nasty pry bar. See, it's still, watch. Oh. You see it move? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it does move together. Yeah, but it's just heavier than I just I watch. So, what you got to do is kind of lift on that. Let me see. You like a. What if I did this right here. Would you be alright with that? I need a shorter one. It's not necessary. It's free from the block. Do you have like a seems... strap? Just a, a little oh, rest strap? strap? Yeah. Yeah, Hold we can on. get some extra. Dang it. You got another inch you can go upwards. I can't. Yep. I'm, I'm hitting the... I'm hitting it. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, we're oh. Wow. We're still in the block. So let it, let it uh, go down a little bit. Can we lift the head up? Is that in the block right now even? Still in that spot? Yeah, right still now? in the block. Wow, things long. Yeah. 
Well, is the hole in the head big enough to make the push rod go all the way through it? Yeah. The push rod so we just need to shove down. the push. We just need to shove the push rod down then. And then was it try to hold it down and pull the head all the way down? You do a shot here. Come on. Not a fan of the cowl hole. Oh, we can avoid it. Yeah. Well, of course. There we go. All right, now can you hold it there? No, it's not to the head. And how much higher can I lift the head? Not much. Like an inch? Can you hold the, uh, the push rod down? <clears throat> Probably now we're kind of wedging on if I'm in the tap anymore. Is the head clear of it right now? No. If you're in top dead center, is this exhaust? That one's in overlap, but it just barely is moving. So it's mostly so closed? So it's really mostly on the base circle, yeah. I'm going to gain 20, 30 thousandths is off. Mm -hmm. I rotate the engine. All right. Put, hey, a, put a hole in the cow. But we can get the, uh, what's it going to Head or something? We've got a lot to do a lot of adventuring in the truck head. Ah, uh, it's been too been to Michigan and back, and it's been to Illinois and back. I think I put, since it got painted, I put about 6,000 miles on. But total, since you guys did the work, is probably 10. So I went back and rewatched our episode because I was trying to see if it had our gauges in there or not on the pillar. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then I, I saw in that video, there was a clip where you said, if this thing would run 10 seconds with triple turbos, I would let you put them on there. <laughs> oh, did I? And so I'm, now, I'm now if, you said it would blow up though. You also couldn't guarantee yeah, it would now, live. It's done. Now, <laughs> the block resistance. But if you want to keep this as a nice hauler, we shouldn't do that. But if there's any chance of you that wants to make this fast, <laughs> we could do that as a YouTube challenge and say, you get the power driven to half a million subscribers, 4,000, some ridiculous number. They're going to come back with a built motor and we're going to fabricate triple turbos and put it oh, in. Oh, so we'd still have this one after the built motor maybe or maybe not expires. Oh, all right. That seems fair. Okay, you guys at home. If you can get the power driven diesel page to, what was it? YouTube channel. We come up YouTube channel to YouTube something channel. 400,000, 500. We're how, right how at 100 many, right now. You're at 100,000. Oh my God, that's a lot. That's dude. a lot. But we okay. tell them and we give them a six month so, time frame or something within six months from this video because your, your video is a shelf life. I got this one. You ready? All right, everybody at home. If you want to see a built 12 valve Cummins in the OG ramp truck with triple turbos, if you want to see that, Power Driven Diesel will send that motor here, install it, we'll go race it, but you guys have to get their YouTube channel from 100,000 subscribers to 101,000. <laughs> <laughs> I know you can do it. Let's go. <laughs> and you got six months to do this. <laughs> we have done the unthinkable. We just added a factory Dodge service hole to the firewall of my Chevy just so we could get that push right out. <laughs> Nope. Is that light fit. too hot? You want to do the honors? There we go. Come on, buddy. But oh. Chevy did include the other factory service hole. Yes, which true. Come out, which, is, which is nice. <laughs> All right, now we can take our cylinder head off. Yeah. This front's coming. It's too heavy. Want like another strap? Nice and slow. There we go. There. I can operate the camera and pump the jack if you want to guide it. We're going for the air. You get the air mod. We're going the air. Oh yeah, the air is nice. Ready? Yep. Do it. Yeah, Harbor Freight. Oh, hold on. Let's watch some light. Okay, turbo's free, almost. Yep. All right. Now, do you want to kind of swing it this way over the fender? Mm -hmm. uh, let's try. Light will just move with it. Go for it. Just come back. Yeah.
go back. Okay, okay. lower down a little bit. Just a hair. Okay, now you can go. Oh, oh, oh. That's all right. It's still okay. I don't know what that is, but it doesn't look doesn't look crucial. Okay. Just a little dust in the motor. <laughs> Whoa, that's my eyeball. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a random dog. It's pandemonium in here. <laughs> oh, this dog is sniffing. What's going on? Goodness. <laughs> How are we looking here? All right. Yeah, look at that. I'm scuffing. I mean, this is like clean, clean. Oh, yeah. Look at that airport tug no, crosshatch yeah. still in there. This thing is money. Do you want a three stone hone it in frame? You know. This thing is mint. Wow, there's a lot of crosshatch. You weren't kidding. Yeah, this thing's yeah. It looks great. So for those of you at home that are worried about an airport tug uh, with a lot of hours on it, don't. Don't you worry. Don't you worry, your sweet little baby. The head is outside drying because we painted it because we care. Show truck. Now, what are we doing, fellas? We're about to pop the gear off the injection pump so we can pull the injection pump out of the truck. Okay. This the injection pump's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. We just thought while we're in here this deep anyway, let's put you a freshly balanced pump that's kind of built specifically for what you're doing. It'll just run a little nice, rattle smooth, a little less smoke. Yeah, it's gonna freaking start out. better. Less smoke, start better. Start better, and we may have turned it up so it has more fuel capacity, that's just possible. in case. Just in case we ever want more power. Just in case. I love it. It's there. And this is the one that everybody wants, right? The P-Pump. The P-Pump. And yep. is that what we're replacing with? Yep. But it's just a, you know, a massaged version. Yeah. Cool. And this is your own in-house tool for removing the injectors. Delivery. These delivery valves. Delivery valves. Sorry, why did I call yeah. it injectors? Sorry, it's a delivery valve. Well, Sorry, common station. The delivery valve holder, but the delivery valve is under there. And yes, you would use that to get into the delivery valves. <laughs> Nice. You like it? Shut up, Will. No, I like it. No. I, I learn from you all the time. <laughs> like how to make grilled cheese sandwiches and, you know, <laughs> both feet when you jump on the trampoline. Like just the important things. Yes. <laughs> oh, it just clears the master cylinder. Nice. Okay. Drain oil slowly so you get a nice little bucket here and let her hang out for a good long time. It should be happily. Does anything have to come off this pump? To go yeah, the this is going to go back. That's yeah. the fuel shutoff solenoid. Yeah, and all some of the brackets and stuff. Cool. And uh, oil feed. Oil feed. Adapter. There's just a few things. Like, just a couple little things. So I'll probably put this back on so you have a place to zip tie whatever may or may not have been zip tied right there. Cool. Okay, so this is the head gasket off the motor. The last time the guys were here, they used a cool tool from Iski to cut a groove into the deck surface of the block. And then they laid round wire in it, creating what's called a fire ring. And that fire ring has left an indentation in the head gasket where it was sealing. Yeah, so the O-ring has left a little groove in the factory fire ring here. Pretty freaking sweet. And you can see it right there. Which is why it's sealed so well with 65 pounds of boost. See, if you look over here, you can see. Yeah, you kind of see the little, right there, the little wires we put in there. Yeah, there it is. Still there, going up to 20 thousandths ahead. Most often now, we do that in the cylinder head itself. Like, if you call and order a head from us, we'll ring the head so you can put it in your block. You don't have to do this in your block, you can do it in the head a lot easier. Uh huh. And so then you get that tolling ported head for your tow truck with the o-ring already installed mm -hmm. and then just bolt it on yep. bolt it on unless your firewall's in the way like ours was then you spend all day on a push rod and a stud that stuck yeah <laughs> one stud that stud we're gonna name that stud that's biff i think it's a pretty good stud so it needs a studly name just biff is strong knows. but he's in the way yeah. you know yep. he's got potential but he's not using it he's just being a jerk it's a lot biff Bad jokes. <laughs> like, make like a tree and get the hell out of here. <laughs> Bad jokes, Beth. <laughs> Cocky Todd. It's your new nickname. <laughs> Cletus's dad, aka Cocky Todd. Cocky Todd, we have a dino appointment tomorrow night, five o'clock, Friday night at Moe's Speed Shop in Dallas, Georgia. The only hiccup I foresee, you know, obviously the tr truck's not together, but, um, 
we're going to have to Austin Powers the ramp truck to get on their dyno because there's another building directly across the alley from the dyno. Okay. I've never successfully dynoed the ramp truck there. I've also never tried though, so I don't know that it doesn't work. Yeah. One concern is a lot of dynos are not wide enough to accommodate a dually, so very common to pull off your outer wheel on your dually to get on a dyno. Hopefully his is wide. If not, we'll have to do that. I do know a dyno that can accommodate a dually. So you're saying rookie dynos. Rookie dynos cannot accommodate duallys, but a man's dyno, a Mustang 1750 Dual Eddy, the big dog, the biggest, baddest the Mustang makes, can't accommodate a dually. Yeah. And 3,000 horsepower. If yep. only we knew someone that had one oh, in what? Georgia. Oh, no. In Georgia. If you're being struck in Utah, we'll put on our dyno, which happens to be that very dyno Will just described. <laughs> and we can put this bad boy with the duallys on, because you're probably gonna, you're probably gonna have a problem with traction with all this power. So you might need the duallys to actually hook up on the dyno. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, good stuff. Cousin Eddie agrees. My biggest fear, Mike, hmm. is that when we dyno it, it's finally gonna make the 650 horsepower we promised you. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna be like, this feels way faster than before. And then you'll call me out and be like, you never gave me 650 before, because now we have 650 and it feels faster. Oh, I have well, a short memory. You probably said 650 crank. Oh, that's a good out. 650 you know, crank. So you have 650 crank, now you have the wheels. So that's rookie awesome. shops, rookie shops claim crank power. Yeah, Real shops claim rear wheel horsepower, and they don't even have to say rear. They just say that's how much horsepower it has. Did I mention Mike, that if the smoke goes away, that's really what I care about? Oh yeah, that's, that's why we're here. Because <laughs> <laughs> it runs great. Yeah. Hey Mike, will it make more power than the C10? Oh, the C10. Is that the same dyno the C10 went on? No, the C10 was on a dyno in Bowling Green, Kentucky, and it made 567 to the tire. Horsepower, not horse torques. So there's there's that. 567. Yeah. You think we'll cover that, Todd? 567 to the tire? Can we add torque and horsepower together and give a total number? If we can sure. do that, I'm pretty sure we got it covered by a mile. Horse torques? Sure. Yes. I don't know. It's, Is that new math? Is that common core? It's diesel keep math. You know, keep we, have to, we have to be like, oh, yeah. It's the Utah my, math. But my, but my diesel, if you had my torque, I got you beat. Know, so the uh, school like, system in Utah is much different than the one in Georgia. Yeah. I think we, I think we have a fair chance. I think we have a fair chance. Um, we'll see if a lot of it's a, how how can it load? Is it a powerful a dyno that can load the engine? Because diesels make a lot more power to load. You go on a dyno, you'll make you know thirty five pounds of boost. You go on the street, you'll make fifty pounds of boost. Like why am I making so much more boost on the street? You can load it harder. So a lot of times you can't actually get your real number on a dyno because you just can't load them hard enough. It just doesn't seem to work. It's kind of weird that way. But it's so a great place to tune it, at least. Yes, you know? before and after results is a great tool, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good thing we have before numbers to go off of, right? Oh. So we have before uh, butt dyno numbers. Uh, oh, butt dyno, yeah. Oh, dude. My left cheek is finally calibrated, don't you worry. Old pump was satisfactory. But since we're coming out, we build pumps, we thought we build a new pump. And look, they are both 911 pumps, which means they're a 180 horsepower pump. But the old 180 horsepower pump, doesn't it's not maxed out. It just has some delivery valves and governor springs we threw in it here. This 180 pump, the guys gave the full works, full rebuild, fresh paint job, obviously. And uh, it flows a mite bit more. A bit Touch more. more. Touch more. Just a wee Maybe bit. Maybe 200 cc's more. This is happening. This is the big day. Oh, tell, tell me all about it. I've finished fabricating studs. It was very hard. <laughs> <laughs> you, you hacked up four bolts, turned them into studs. I believe that took you two and a half days. Congratulations. Well, I'm a man of many talents. Okay, so hold on. That's the new turbs. So this is a brand new Aggressor 6064. Okay. So the old one was 58 millimeter, this one's 60. Okay. The old one was 60 millimeter on the back, this one's 64. The okay. other one was 12 blade, this one's 10 blade. 10 blades, more flow, lower EGT, 60 mil compressor, a little more boosty boys. And it's sparkly, like if you look close, like. And that's painted in America by an American craftsman. Oh. In Cedar yeah. City, Utah. This one's not sparkly. 
And that one's made in Brazil. Who wants a Brazil turbo when you can have an American turbo? Well, the chicks in Brazil are, you know, kind of hot. I mean, it's a pretty good It's turbo. a great turbo, it's though. It's a pretty good turbo. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hit on that turbo. It's really good. No, it's a great turbo. And actually, this could be yours. I have signed it. This is official off the roadkill ramp truck. It is half of the compound turbo system that Power Driven Diesel originally installed on this thing. The spinny thing still spins, even though my name is on it. And this could be yours. Go to fsmgarage.com right now. Buy something, anything, even if it's just stickers, and you can have a shot at winning this. And, you know, hang it on the shelf or put it in your project car. But for now, let's assemble. Back to our scheduled programming. Yes. Look at that. Fits like it was meant to go there. Want another pair of hands? I'll put the camera down. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Power driven diesel. Three different kinds of hardware for everything. Just kidding. We're about to release our new merch line. We're going <laughs> to steal your idea of doing <laughs> university. <laughs> I'm just going to call it Will Terry Fab, WTF. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Turbo's in, exhaust is reconnected, which we had to do a little little tweaking to get that to line up again because this turbo is in a little bit different place, but not too bad. Cold side looks like it's gonna work. The head is torqued, rockers are in. Note the brand new stainless rocker stands that are much more durable than the old ones. I'm filming you, you filming me. What, 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 what? Oh my God. It's like Inception. I know. And uh, injection pump's about ready to get torqued, but you have a tech tip on that. Yes. So, you guys said the timing on your P-pump trucks, you're gonna see this washer come off under the nut that holds this the gear onto the shaft. Just a split washer? Yeah, split lock washer. And anytime you do this job, I would recommend not reusing this washer. People do it and that's fine, but if you ever do it, you're likely going to slip timing and do the job twice. So, whenever we send out a kit or anything, we send a Nordlock washer, this thing really grabs awesome. And it works aw this works really, really well. So if you want to do the job twice or more, reuse your old washer. Otherwise, get something modern and good, and you do the job once. So Nordlock for the win. And a Nordlock, it, it's not just a serrated washer, right? It's a, it's a little different, right? Yeah, the insides are actually locked. Have you ever seen one of these? The insides are locked. I don't know if I can pull these apart. So they're serrated on the inside, on the outside, and on the inside. So really, it can't move. They're really, really cool. That's cool. Let's see if I can pop these apart. Pump pump there we go. Come here, buddy. Yes, you see, they're keyed on the inside. Yeah, it's two washers. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the way they're flaking, can't, they can't go backwards. So this is like the best of lock washer technology that I'm aware of. Nice. Works really well. Okay, and where's this come? This is going on the shaft of the P-pump, right on this guy here. It's the lock washer for the nut. And it's a big deal that you put that in there, otherwise you will slip timing, guaranteed. And that would be bad. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't mean like a V8 kind of timing. This is timing the fueling of the motor, not the ignition, not, it's not the cam timing either. It's just the fuel nope. pump. This is when the injector fires relative to piston position. So you, we're setting this pump up about 18 degrees before top dead center. Then it's gonna fire the injector for this particular motor. And there's no variable. In this engine, it's set. It's 18 degrees all the time. Doesn't advance, doesn't retard. It is what it is on this particular engine. Uh -huh, okay. So it's like your ignition timing and your fuel at the same time. Yeah. Because it starts to burn relatively short. Yeah, as soon as it shoots fuel, fuel it starts burning. Yeah, because diesel, what the, like, compression ratio is ridiculously high on this thing, right? Yeah, it's about 17.3 stock. Wow, and cylinder pressure is obviously really, really high. Mm -hmm. So the moment you stick fuel in there, boom. Yeah, yeah, fuel does not go in with the air. Fuel is injected at the top of the piston stroke. And what kind of fuel pressure? Does it take oh, to get oh. get around eighteen to twenty thousand psi is what the injection pump puts in. <laughs> now, modern trucks, they're, they're, I mean, yeah, they're they get upwards almost thirty. We're now. over thirty. Like on my common rail back home that I do pretty wild stuff with, it's over thirty thousand psi injection pressure. So it's pretty up there. And by wild stuff, he means blow the cabin in half. Let's oh, let's cut to that video. <laughs>
summon you to give me. I don't know what the race means. <laughs> okay, uh, Valblash is set. You'll notice some giant holes in the cylinder head just waiting for injectors. And the way I understand it, this is the key to us having less smoke. This is the way. Do you have an old one to compare to the new one? I'm not going to be able to see any difference. Only one's dirty, one's clean. Oh. oh. Are you saying I can't see? see you can see my eyes suck? Yeah, see, one, one's dirty, one's clean. <laughs> So one difference, these old ones are a VCO. These are a micro blind sack, which means it's got a smaller tip. But the big difference is the way the holes are formed. The EDM holes. process, the size of the holes, orientation. So does the new one have more holes? The new one has more holes. Okay. But they're smaller than the old one. Okay. So same flow, but a finer mist? Mm-hmm. Uh, Better atomization. Better control, better ionization. All right, so we put these in there and smoke gets better. Smoke gets better and power stays the same or actually sometimes, actually usually it improves a little. Oh, that's a bold statement. It's, right. They're really nice, they really work really good. It's and what do you call these things? Power jets. Power jets from Power Driven Diesel. All right, so these are, were these factory before, these ones here? They're basically no. a factory, they're factory nozzle that's been modified bigger. Okay. But in the old, you could only extrude hone them in the past, so you kind of limited to the factory holes. These ones start as a blank nozzle, so we can put the holes anywhere we want, any size we want, uh -huh. and all of a sudden, there the power's unlocked. Nice. All right, so those go in, then uh, cold side gets put together, and then make noise. The long and the short of it is, if you don't have big holes, it runs out of RPM quickly. It doesn't burn well in the cylinder if the holes are too small. Ah. But if the holes are big, it makes it smoky. But if you have big holes and small holes, the small holes makes it not smoky. Because it, it ignites quicker. It ignites quicker, and it's almost like having two injection events with one. Even though the fuel enters at the same time, they burn at different times. Dude, that's crazy. It's almost like making like a common rail where it has two fuel shots. Oh, is that the, is, that's what a common rail does? Well, it's just so quiet. They do a tiny little shot really early, and then they, when it starts to burn, they put the big shot in, so you don't have this immediate pressure spike. So that's why they're so quiet compared to like that's this why engine. Quieter. And okay. it raises the, the cylinder temperature before the big shot of fuel. Because the big shot of fuel actually quenched the cylinder enough that it like has to basically revaporize and so it delays when it can burn. That makes sense. If we get a big race truck, you can't even start it on diesel sometimes because it'll quench the cylinder so much it won't even burn. Wow. You start it on starting fluid, then bring the fuel in. It's weird. Pushing it outside so it's not to smoke out the house. Yeah, okay, might as well. No reason not to. Push it. This thing's gonna run. Once it's outside, we're not we're gonna have to push it back in. Alright. Yeah. Ignore the mystery car under the cover. <laughs> That's not here. Okay, one last dummy check. Yeah, buddy. Nothing there. That's on. Any random Pins tools out. laying around? We unpin the pump, right? We're, We're ready. Do it. Oh, it's already better. 
So before when I would fire it up, you'd have to crack the throttle a little bit, and it would black smoke everywhere. Warmed it up. We are now doing a hot retorque and then bonsaiing the Mo Speed Shop. No just, tuning necessary, hopefully. Just, oh, you can tune it all the way over there. That's right, that's right. And then uh, we'll bonsai the Mo Speed Shop, see if we can actually fit this thing in the room and whether it fits on the chassis dyno and then find out what does she make with some tweaking. We've got three knobs and one switch in there we can play with. I play with them all the time. I don't know if it helps or not, but. I feel a difference when I do. <laughs> Here we go, first road test. When you fired it up, you had to crack the throttle open and then it would just soot like the driver. Bad. This isn't bad at all. You don't need to spin the dial at all. It's, just, it's all the boost, all yes. the fuel. Yes. Light passes everything. Moe's Speed Shop. And right now, Jeff Harris, who runs this place, is measuring the wheelbase of the ramp truck to see, can we get it inside of Moe's Speed Shop to use the chassis dyno? I don't know. Let's see what we're working with over here. Like, uh, it's tight. Every car and, or truck I brought into this place, it's been tight. Until today, it never occurred to me to even try with a ramp truck. And this might not work. I don't know. We'll give it a shot though. Floor jacks will definitely be involved. Maybe even a forklift. That is tight. We're uh, about to try to get the Roadkill Ram truck in the most speed shop chassis I know. Not gonna be easy. Now there's four people yeah, I think, I think that's enough. pushing on the bed. The ramp truck's jacked up in the air. We're trying to swing the back of the truck over so that we can clear the bollards that are protecting the doorway of most speed shop. <laughs> we could jack the front up and pull the front to the right. That sounds sketchier given the extra weights up there. Oh, okay. That doesn't sound like a bad idea. Okay. This side we were, we, we can uh, pull the front over now with the jack. Get another jack in here. Just it should be enough room now, by the way it looks. It's going good. We got this. It'll go in. I believe that now. Getting out later when we're all dead tired because we've been working until 11 o'clock at night every day this week might be a little bit of an issue, but uh, I feel good, I feel good. You want to see the greatest traffic jam ever? Let's take a tour through the bowels of Moe's Speed Shop in Dallas, Georgia. Oh yeah, there you go. G-Body Shuffle, Wagon, 
Christian Camaro, Fox Body, Gasser Nova, Mustang, Mustang, Chevelle, Pontiac Le Mans, look at that, 56 Chevy Convertible, Panthers, just stuff everywhere. Yeah. Nice little Cuda, another nice little Cuda, and then the Roadkill Ramp truck, miraculously strapped down to the dyno. This is happening. This is happening. And uh, kudos to you, sir, for the uh, yes for the deflector. We've got a we got a fan into the exhaust pipe and a hood to hopefully send the exhaust out the shop and not all over these beautiful cars. This is, this is as much as possible. Oh man, can you imagine the white saline Mustang, what it would look like had you not done what you just did? Well, luckily with these turbos in this field, it's not gonna be terribly smoky, so on spool up it's gonna smoke. After that, it'll be pretty clean, but still. Look yeah. at stuff here, dude. We, got, we gotta do our part. Yeah. 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 Here's Jeff Harris, get her strapped down. And the great thing about this is there's really not a lot of tuning to do. We have, you know, street mode, and then you flip the switch to party mode, and that's it. It makes what it makes. You just gotta make sure you're locked up. Don't yes. Locked, we're losing hundreds of horsepower. I was gonna let you drive, okay. if you're cool with that, sure. so that I could film. And then, um, you know, the last thing we need to do here is take bets on what it's gonna make. I think we should get a Sharpie and write everybody's guesses right here. Actually, right there, because that never gets run over by a tire. We can put them all there and, uh, They'll stay there for a long time. What's it gonna make, fellas? You wanna know this? No? Yeah, all right. So, five, five nine Cummins, all right. Compound turbos, valve springs. Did we do a cam in this? I don't remember. No. No cam, stock cam, stock bottom end, compound turbos, some fuel system mods. What's it gonna make of the tires? Torque and horsepower. Torque and 369. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, well, we want some turbos. Uh, 369 feet in uh, sort of towing compound set. Okay. Sorry, I thought you were going to give him a horsepower. I was like, no. don't influence him. I say 730 and 920 torque. Woo. 730 horsepower and what? 924. 924. David? 924. Uh, 730. Oh, that, that was cold. No. 531 and 980. 531 horsepower. 531 and 980 for Tony. How about Big Al here? What we got? Kennel House David. And, is it Cole? Yep. Cole. Okay. All right. Big guy. Cole, you're on the wall. Okay. You two, you know, are obviously ringers at this. It's your combo. All right, Will. It's going through a 47 RH transmission and a late model Dodge transmission. Late torque, model Dodge rear end. And 200. Torque, 1250. Horsepower, 527. Boy, you want to put a 0.3 grid on or something? Yeah. <laughs> this is like Price is Right rules. I'm going to go 1100. Is it without going over? Is that how it works? Yeah, that's right. Price is Right. Yeah. 1100. I'm going to go 550. I'm going to do the split right in half. I'm optimist that the torque converter is going to work and it's going to lock up and we're going to make some power. All right. Mo. Mm. Jeff. Well, I'm Jeff. Dino operators yeah. usually never it lose at this. No, it's Jeff. I, I don't know diesel, so I'm going to say 555. For torque or horsepower? Horsepower. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 555, that's a nice number. Yeah, and I'm going to say torque. Let's do, uh, let's do 870. 870. Wow. Yeah, Mr. Mike. Oh, I think she's gonna make a thousand foot pounds of torque. Straight up 1,000. Yep, and she's gonna make 565 ponies. Man, we might as well just sit in everybody's, everybody just sitting in everybody's pocket. We're all yeah, right there together, yeah, you know? <laughs> All right, the bet is one dollar, fellas. One dollar. We'll, winner take all. I got, I got you, Cole. So we're adding them up. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, oh, and look right here. Done. He's oh, always uh, oh, a dollar in dinner. Oh. All I got is a five, so. Yeah. Oh, big spender. I'm gonna say I'll get you back. Oh, I got five. Yeah, big spender. We got Mike. We got Mike. We're good. Just throw it in. They're not taking us out. Just throw it in. <laughs> <laughs> There's we're getting five in there now. Now we're talking. All right. There's Slim Jim and like twelve bucks. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I revise my numbers? No, oh, it's too late. <laughs> Sorry for your luck. 
time. I think I can win. Maybe. <laughs> closest closest to either number wins. Let's do that. Make it simple. Yeah, that works. All right, so we're going to 80, what, 80 miles an hour? Yeah, 80, right? 81 is without going over? 81. 81, it should be about 2,000. So I'm going to watch this, right? Because this has. We already calibrated it. We just have to see if it's okay. Make sure we're right. Fan is on to get rid of the smoke. Hopefully, all of these boots stay on because I've blown off a couple of them before. Stay on. We'll turn on the other fan. There you go, then. So, you know. I don't know where I want to. I want to see the smoke, but I don't want to be here for it. <laughs> you definitely don't want to be in between the comet and the ramp truck. I'm just gonna go right here. <laughs> Yeah. I think all the cool ones on the ground. No boost, guys. There was no boost. Might have all went there's, into the there's no more cool ones either. Is that a thermostat? Didn't that open or something? No pressure in the hose anymore. Anybody got a light? Uh, <laughs> He's like, what kind of power to make? Todd asks you the real questions. The cool one's not like screaming hot. Where did it come out of though? It's not that Where did it come out of? It was coming this way, so... It came out of both sides of this oh, thing. I see it peeping right here. Looks like the hose blew off right there. Your heater hose, there's no clamp on it. There's no clamp on it? So just pop the hose off right there. Look. Oh wow, okay. Underneath the alternator. Yeah. Other than your floor, Probably it's like not a cut three quarter. Yeah. No hose clamp. Yeah, the cool one's on the ground is ice cold. It's like you can cut it. You hear the clamp? You get the pop. I'll pop it up. You're nice fans. That was tuned, by the way. That was what? I didn't realize you were not in party mode. Oh, that was oh that was street mode. That was valet. Oh, valet mode is worth yeah. what? Let's so see. We, we go on from here. So, there's a, so valet mode is 202 horsepower, and where's the I put it on boost so you can reach boost. So you can see. We made uh, 35 pounds. 35, 35. So 35 pounds. 35 pounds. Of this, oh, you want to see the torque? So in, uh, torque. That's in valet mode. That's what, you know. You park it at the palms. Put it all on black. They're out there hot rodding your truck. Absolutely. But they're really not going 464 fast. 464 torque. 
All right, so 464 torque, 204 horsepower. And this is about 100 more foot-pounds of torque than this engine made stock at the tires of this truck. It made, I think, 330 when it was stock with a 454. So we're already better and lighter because coolant's on the ground. The coolant's going to make it faster. The coolant's definitely going to make it slippery. All right, here we go. Pool number one, valet mode. Max power, 204.23. Max torque, 464 at 88 miles an hour. And uh, yeah, all over the floor now. So we doubled our horsepower, we doubled our torque. 424 horsepower, 958. Who, who won? This seems really low. How much boost did it make? What does it say? The log? Uh, Jeff can pull it up. But if that's the case... It, who's... Might, it might be because, like, so there's not a... This, this dyno does not load, so you can't really... Could you, you can drag the brakes. But it's not great. 958, 424. Who's closest? Who's winning the money? Definitely. On torque, I think I'm closest, but not on horsepower. On torque. I think it's got the torque. Oops. Torque. 980. Uh, he went over. Oh, he went over. Yeah. 870. Yeah, Jeff won. Jeff won the start. All right, how about horsepower? We all went over. Jeff's the winner. Jeff's the winner. I told you, dyno operators no. always win this. I feel like he might have, he might have made this happen. Yeah, it's like okay. Yeah. Dyno operators always win, Jeff. Did I win? Yeah. Oh. We were all over on horsepower. Wait, how much boost did you were the closest on torque? Let's see what it made for boost. Let's go check it out. The pull was really short. What RPM did we go to? About 3,000. We can do RPM too. I was watching it. I left about 3,000. Miscellaneous. There we go. Ash ball. That was about 44 pounds of boost. That sound about right. 46. You've been 65 on the street in the past? With the old setup. Yeah. Max, max was 47.5 pounds. So. Is there a way to make this say RPM? Yeah, we can do RPM. So I'm just curious here. what RPM is peak and where I would expect or if it's... So this is torque or horsepower? We, we, can, we, can, we can lay it out. We can do it this way too. We can do dual, we'll do dual screen. This way we can put down here, we're gonna put miscellaneous, we're gonna put ash roll. And then here we'll put torque. And you can kind of see them all together. So this is boost on the bottom? Okay, that's boost on the bottom. Yeah. Okay. First one in red, second run in blue. Mm -hmm. So we made more boost. Lots more boost. And this is torque. Which, and torque peaks in, wow, it peaks at like 2300 RPM. Yeah, about the time that you press the gas. <laughs> Instantly, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Can I do one more another run? Yeah. I, I just put the turbo trader, I want to see if it affects the boost at all, or if we're just, yeah. just curious, like, if we have any, like, these are not huge compounds, but. Yeah, let's do I another one. I remember which way, I just turned it a bunch. Okay. <laughs> do you want a flash, do you want a flashlight? I don't know which way Clockwise, I, I just turned it a bunch. I think clockwise goes in. Yes. And I think that is more. More is better. Yeah.
sign blew off. I think your hose for boost just blew. That's a lot of smoke this time. <laughs> so, uh, you're not going to have boost on that one because it blew apart. This is 47.5 pounds. It maxed the it maxed the sensor out. Oh, sorry. So it's over 47.5 pounds. Holy crap! 1350. 504 horsepower, 1351 foot pounds of torque, and it was all on how you loaded the dyno. I was trying to load it earlier, and with the brakes get the turbo spooled like on the on the road because there's no load in this in this. Dino. It's a great dyno, it's just love the diesel love load. Yeah. It's like, all right, I'll do the brakes. It made a difference. Dude. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, a lot more smoke. So when we raced, it's way more. Probably, probably, probably the most boost that pushed the AFC forward and gave us the fuel we were not getting. We uh, that boost actually make it happen. Dude. So the boost, it gives you more fuel. So truth be told, if you had a lockup and overdrive switch, I'll bet I could get 550 horse out of this setup right now. But I would flip it from third to overdrive mid-run and get all that load. Yeah. And then it'd make a nice, beautiful curve. Wow. But still, five. I mean, what did it do? Five? Dude, that's five. 1,300 five five pounds on the ground? 1,351? Yeah. That's not bad. Not bad. That's insane. <laughs> better than the 454. This, oh, way better. Big block to leave for the wind. Yeah, this makes a 1,000 more foot-pounds of torque than I made with the 454. <laughs> like, I think it's bananas. Wow. And about 200 more horsepower. And your nine-piece drive shaft held up. You did not break the drive shaft. Wait, 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 wait. I gotta get home still. Like, I still gotta get home. Right on. Well, that's great. That's All great. it needs is a bath. Nice work, fellas. Yeah. Appreciate it. Wait, wait, who won? Wait, oh, he, he won. won. Will won with that 1250 torque number. How much cash was it? I think it was like, it's like a thousand bucks. Fifteen dollars. Thirteen hundred and fifty dollars for a 1350 foot pounds of torque. Fourteen dollars and two Slim Jims. That's at least worth a grand. Dude, not a bad yeah. day. Those are Moe's <laughs> Slim Jims. These are these are special. Jeff uh, donated these to the. Can't cause. get that just anywhere. All right. Upside down. Congratulations. <laughs> Absolutely. We're out. Good stuff. In case you didn't know, now you know. Moe's Speed Shop in Dallas, Georgia. This is where you go when your stuff leaks coolant. This is where you go when you're gonna be late for every dyno appointment you ever schedule. This is where you go when you have a half-ass finished project and you know you're not ready to dyno test it. Just call Jeff, he loves that sort of thing. <laughs> only for Mike, only for Mike. Everybody else scheduled to the front. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. Um, these guys crushed it. The ramp truck is amazing. And once again, it proves how far you can go with a used Cummins engine. Never forget, this thing came out of a military airport tug. It had 17,000 miles on it, but a billion hours. And although it looks amazing inside and we've hopped it up and it makes a ton of power, it's probably a ticking time bomb at some point. And so these guys have made me an offer and uh, I need your help. They will build a Stroker 6.1? 6.1 liter. A 6.1 liter Stroker Cummins 12 valve for the Roadkill ramp truck if you guys go give them a follow and boost their numbers. They're hovering around like 100,000 subscribers. They want 400,000 subscribers, which is a massive number. There's no time limit for this. <laughs> and by no time limit, I mean six months. They give me six months. They're like, Mike, if you can get another 300,000 people over to our page to sign up and watch this guy blow his truck in half, they'll build a stroker big block for this thing. We will go to Utah drive the truck, bring it all the way there, and film an install and dyno session of this thing with a real motor in it. It'll be, it'll be awesome. It'll, it's already awesome. Oh, it's amazing. But it could be more awesome. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching Finnegan's Garage. I appreciate it. Again, sign up for the Power Driven YouTube channel because if you subscribe there, we put a better motor in here. Thank you.